Hey guys, happy Monday. It's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. We've been vacationing yeah. and so we understand. On the beach. We understand if actually nobody listens today, <laughs> yeah. that's really fine. We're gonna speak it out there by faith. Yep. Into the uh, wild blue yonder. Amity, you're so All faithful. Right. Hey, Dan Moore. Dan. How are you guys? Jamie, how are you? So, yes, we're back, you guys. We're back. It's Monday, and this is your Monday motivation. It's been a couple of weeks, I know. At least we two had, or maybe three I weeks. I don't even know. Yeah, you were gone, and then we were gone together, and it's just one of those things. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so, living the rough life. We were on the beach in Florida. We were. Mm-hmm. I was on free vacation to Las Vegas, things like that. So yeah, it was rough. It was rough. Yeah, it's good. But hey, Stephanie. So welcome, you guys. Uh, today we have some really fun, interesting, cool stuff that God was, is speaking to us. Um, and we titled this "Come Up Higher." It's based on Psalm 24. So if you got your Bibles in front of you, or you want to open up your app on your phone or something, mm -hmm. Psalm 24. There's a couple other scriptures that go with it, but this morning God was speaking to me. He actually first said uh, Mark 7, which you can read that later. It goes with the same theme, but um, when I started reading Mark 7, the title on it is um, Jesus Deals with Inner Purity. And so I was thinking, hi Kelly, I was thinking of Psalm 24 because I knew that it was also dealing with inner purity and Dan said that last week um, or this past week they um, talked about Psalm 24 and just like purifying our hearts so Psalm 24 so you want me to, to read take it? A full breath, huh? What's the matter? No I just did. You been running? No. No. Okay. Um, Working out. <clears throat> um, you want me to read it? You, yeah go for it. Okay. So I'm just going to, it's a short psalm. I'm going to read the whole thing real quick, and then we can kind of break it down and, and discuss what it, what it means, what the Lord is saying <clears throat> for really the body of Christ in this season right now. So Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to him. Yeah, I got my big gigantic Bible, okay? Picture it takes Bible. me a little while. It's got pictures in it. It does. <laughs> Uh, for he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. And then verse three, who may climb the mountain of the Lord? And we're going to talk about what that actually means. Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure. Those who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their savior. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. Then verse seven, open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors and let the king of glory enter. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors and let the king of glory enter. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the king of glory. Okay, so in verse three, where it's talking about who can climb up the mountain of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? I felt like that means we all want to come up a little higher and see from God's perspective, see our lives and the things happening in our life. Um, we want to stand with him. I, be, I kind of think like standing next to God in agreement with him. Who can stand in agreement She's with God? She's holding my arm. Really I am. Proclaiming that I'm that. God, actually. That's pretty Weird. No. Not. No. Okay. This is just pretend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but who can climb the mountain of the Lord, like come up higher to see from his perspective and who may stand with him in his holy place in agreement with him. Mm -hmm. um, just a side note, if you're experiencing a lot of chaos and a lot of like transition and upheaval uh, in your life, uh, in your body, people in your family, in your relationships, if uh, you yourself or other people are experiencing that, that is normal. It's something that God is doing. He's like bringing some things to the surface so that he can heal them and get some obstacles out of the way um, because we're coming so much closer to the, to the return of Jesus. 
preparing the next generation. Lord, sorry, had a, it disconnected for a second. Um, so he said, those who can come up higher and stand with him in agreement, only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who don't worship idols and never tell lies. I, when I was reading that this, doesn't mean being perfect, but no, what does that mean? But I think it means three things. I think um, yeah. I think it, it talks about clean hands in one mm -hmm. version and a pure heart. Yes. And who's not lifted his soul up to an idol. I just think that mm -hmm. says three things. What uh, your hands are what you do, your heart is what you say, mm -hmm. because because That's the words good. come out of your heart. Right. And then your soul is your life. It's really your lifestyle. So really it, right. it's a progression of of you, you can tell you can tell a lot about a, a person about where their hands are, what 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 they got their hands into. Really, mm -hmm. so so right there, he's telling us, hey, the, the, you, he's really showing us and, and saying, hey, gauge your life, like what's really happening. But I think the interesting thing here, Emily, yes. is verse one. Yeah, this is it sets so. It all up. This is this is like mm -hmm. the, if you read this, it says. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the found earth's foundations and I can't see it on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Right. This right here yeah. is the challenge for all people. Do we really believe that God, everything is God's? Because right. that doesn't if, belong to us. I believe you can't get to verse uh, three and four until mm -hmm. you've until you've addressed right. verse one and two. That's until right. we've said, you know what? No, nope. my family's yours. My job is yours. Yes. Everything is Good. yours. Because I because he think that we we like God wants us to come up higher, yeah. and we think we're coming up higher, but we don't realize that that we're, we're we only kind of we give him what we want to give him. Right. We don't give him everything. We just give him what we want to give him. Or right. sometimes what we know to give him. But really, truly. Right. Sometimes you, we don't you, even know. Yeah. You, you'll know, though. Mm -hmm. you, you know when, when you know what? You're I holding just, a piece back or you're holding a person back. Or maybe it's your maybe it's your spouse or your child or something like that. Yeah. I'll give you everything, but not that. I, you know. I said this uh, at the staffing. I said, you know, I have this fetish that I, I really love to wash my hands with um, hand sanitizer. Oh, yeah, just all the time. So there's <laughs> everywhere. I just grab it. I don't know why, but. I don't want to get sick, but I just like, I like the feeling of my hands being clean. I just yes. like it. And I really related that to um, our hearts. Like God likes us to have, know the feeling of our hearts being clean. Yeah. So I got hand sanitizer everywhere in every corner. It's in the church. So when I see one, I'm going to go for it. Yeah. But it really is kind of a picture of what God wants in our hearts. He wants a clean heart. So we are, he, he wants us to constantly move forward mm -hmm. and move higher with the idea of, okay, you know, if there's anything dirty. And, and, and the truth is, you know what? I think we all know when something's dirty. Right. We all know when like something just isn't right. Yeah. I like to think of it like this. This is kind of what the Holy Spirit's showing me for um, this season. That, like, and we're going to talk about it in a minute when we say open up ancient gates. It's like... Um, welcoming the Holy Spirit into the basement of your heart, into the dark corners and the closets and all the cobwebs, you know, just come on in, open up. I'm open up. Holy Spirit, come on in. You just blow on through. You have free reign here. I'm not holding anything back from you. I want my heart to be completely pure. And out of your heart comes, yeah, your, your words, but also your actions, right? The hands are going to be pure. If that goes higher deals with their own heart yeah, okay. the person that doesn't go higher is the person so if you, if you look at you look at those three things what what are you doing and what are you yeah. saying so god clearly says those who people who gossip those people who you know call meetings what do you know it's like you, you find out where you're at where are you going are you are you are you in places where you shouldn't be mm -hmm. and are you saying things that that just are you know they, they're just not right yeah. you know or are you are you looking inward and saying you know what Lord, where, where's my heart right here? Yes. It's the person that looks inward. Like we, we said this on Tuesday. We said, you know, God can get you to the other side only when he has you on the inside. He can yeah. only get you mm -hmm. to the other side when you give him what's on the inside. What's on the inside. Right. So that reminded me of Isaiah 57, verse 14 and 15. If you want to write that down or you want to look at it now or later. Um, God says, rebuild the road. Clear. 
that my people can return from captivity. So mm -hmm. he's, not, he's not just saying my people like all those people out there. He's saying you are my people. <laughs> I want my people to return from captivity. What, whatever is in you that is keeping you in captivity, clear away those rocks and those stones. Because here's the next verse. And this is Isaiah 57 again, verse 15. The high and lofty one who lives in eternity, the holy one, says this. I live in that high and holy place, the mountain of the Lord. With those whose spirits are contrite and humble. Contrite. Humble. So I said, I restore the crushed spirit of the humble, because yes. this explains it. And I revive the courage of those with repentant hearts. Contrite is repentant. Here, a repentant heart. Here's a phrase. Yeah. Breakthrough happens on the around you on the outside when break up happens on the inside. Break, everyone wants so break. Break up right. until there's something to that heart is 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 broken, right? right? Yes. Crush. So we want to clear away the rocks and the stones on the inside of us, so that we are free from captivity, and then we can lead other people out of captivity. There are people following your life that they're going to stumble over the same things that you stumble over if you do not remove those things from your heart and from your soul. And then also, God said. You know, like that's a humility when you when you're able to go. Yep, Holy Spirit, come on in, clear away the rocks and the stones. I don't right. want that bondage. I don't want that thing in between me and you. Come on in. That's humility, and that means that God says, "The humble one, I'm I'm calling you up higher. I'm calling you closer to me, and I'm letting you come up the mountain of the Lord to stand with me in my holy place." I tell you what I see right now, just just pastoring and overseeing people. Right now, there it is. A dividing line. Um, it, we, I just call it the tale of two sinners. Mm -hmm. uh, the one who is the prodigal son that mm -hmm. recognizes his own depravity, recognizes that he comes to his senses, he repents. Yes. And then the other son who thinks that he's right, right. <laughs> and 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 it's it's called but he doesn't version. come and in with I, the father. It's it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I we see I see it right now. I see it in in people's lives, and right. and I'm praying my butt off. By the way, mm -hmm. I'm as a pastor, I am praying and praying, praying for everyone because yeah. because it, it's a, it, it's one of those places that um, again, it's really difficult for that person to see. Yeah. Um. And and it it, it anyways. So I I really mm -hmm. see this dividing line, and I'm hoping I'm praying like this scripture says that we all come to the place where we examine our own hearts and we say, okay, God, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. What am I saying? Mm -hmm. And how am I living? Yeah. Right. So and it's only the acknowledging of it. Like, like I just said, letting the Holy spirit come in and remove the stuff that's in the way, or just like even let you see what's in the way, what rocks and stones are in my heart, Lord, what things are in the way in between me and you that are keeping me from closeness with you, what things are, are, um, muddying up the waters of my heart or the waters of my life, because I don't want that stuff because I don't want, uh, whoever's following behind me, I'm leading people. I'm leading my children and my future grandchildren. I'm going to be leading them, but I don't want them to stumble over the things that I stumble over. I don't want them to have this big rock or obstacle or mountain in front of them that keeps them close with you. I want to remove all of that from me so the people coming behind me, they uh, can get stronger and they can grow faster than me. And, mm -hmm. um, they can have pure hearts and they can stand with the Lord on his, yeah. on his mountain. So that's why we go to verse seven, Psalm 24, verse seven. And we say, open up ancient gates. And we're talking to our heart, the gates of our heart, <clears throat> open up ancient doors and let the King of glory enter. So it's not like it's an automatic thing. Let means allow, allow you have right. a choice in the matter. Choose to let the King of glory in open up. Right. And the, the story behind this or the truth behind this scripture, it says, open up you ancient gates. It's actually, it, 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 was, it was written back then, it was written about a castle and a king yes. and a king in his castle. And so when the king went away for war, he would, he would, he would be protected. He would go away and fight 
would fight his enemy or adversary outside. And when he would return to the castle, all right, when he returned, he would look at the gate. If the gate was halfway open, it was a warning to him, don't come in. Don't come. If the gate was three quarters of the way open, it was a warning to him, say something is wrong on the inside. But when the gate was fully open, it gave him, it says, you know what? I can go into my own kingdom. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Ooh. That that heart. Open it all the way. It's got to be open all the way. All my the doors are open to you. Stinking way. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be open all the way. Right. And, and that's hard for human beings. That's why when you yeah. look at the first two verses, it's the challenge. Mm. And it says, okay, do you really believe that the earth is the Lord's? Everything in it, everything I have is his. Yeah. Because if we don't, if we can't answer that first question or that first statement, yeah. verse one and two, then what we're saying is you have this God, mm -hmm. but I have that. Right. I'll give you Sunday, right. but, I'll, but I'll take Monday through Saturday. Right. I'll give you this, but I can have that. It doesn't yeah. work. So what that what that's saying is the gate mm -hmm. is not all the way open and yeah. God's saying, I really can't do what I want to do. Right. So we're saying in Psalm 24, if you want to come up higher into the, and see from God's perspective, stand next to him in his high and holy place, uh, because not because you're perfect, but because Jesus was perfect for you. You're taking the righteousness of Jesus. You're just like, Lord, forgive me for all that junk. Like, oh, come on in. I open up my heart to you. Just clean out all the rocks and the stones in the cobwebs. Then you receive that right relationship with God, it says in verse 8, and receive his blessing. That's the righteousness of Jesus that you're taking, not your own. He's going to help you not to worship idols from verse 4 and not to be deceived or tell lies. Um, so basically, the idols and the lies, idols could be your spouse, idols could be your children, could be ministry, anything that you would put in the place of God that you would put trust in. Like, I often catch myself trusting myself more than I trust God. Like, uh, I'm trying to figure out what might be the best way to do something or what's going to be the best outcome of this situation or something like that and try to make it happen. Then I'm putting more trust in myself than I am in God if I'm, I'm not going to him first. Um, so that's just worshiping idols. That's idolatry in my heart. And then lies is just deceived or deceiving. Uh, there's a verse that says, if you say you have no sin, then you're, you're lying, you know, like, just acknowledge, just be honest. I guess that's what it means is um, it's not that you never tell a lie in your life, but just be honest with yourself and with God. Be completely gut level honest. Yep, I do see that junk in there. Yep, I do have that idolatry. I do have that sin. I have that, you know, trusting in something other than God. You, Lord, prove it. Yeah, you know, do you, and I, I often think about in my own life, and, and I see this too, is where Bible says, um, you know, before you take the speck out of someone else's eye, take the plank out of your own. Right. Mm -hmm. and that's really judgment. And yeah. um, if you think Just about, admit that it's yeah, and I've, I've, I've read this, that people that don't know the Lord that are looking at church mm -hmm. Christians from the outside, there's a couple things that they see that we don't see. A couple things they don't like. Number one, they don't like that, 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 they, that they feel judged. They don't mm -hmm. like that, that Christians are judging them. Mm -hmm. And Bible says we judge not unless you be judged. We're not supposed to judge anybody, mm -hmm. right? That that's up to God. Um, and so we, we can't we can't they don't like it that we're that they feel judged. We should never do that. And that's that's taking the plank out of our eye. And, and the right. thing about that is that you can't take a plank out of your eye. In other words, if a plank's in your eye, you're not living. If a plank is in your eye, so Mm -hmm. But 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 it, it is kind of funny. It's a funny uh, picture. But the truth is, is that um, that the world looks at, and they also look at being hypocritical. Right. You know. So what, what I'll say, I said this on Sunday. It says God mm -hmm. does not work through perfection. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. See, when people right. think they're perfect, perfect, when people think and try to be perfect. And they're, they're already wrong. <laughs> and, I mean, pe people that make decisions, I think this is interesting. They make decisions. We've all been there. Make decisions mm -hmm. without like any accountability. They're making decisions. You know, even a couple people make decisions or whatever. One person, and they don't realize that there's 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 wisdom in a multitude of counsel. Mm -hmm. um, there's wisdom in God's word. They they mm -hmm. and so what happens is um, they, they they don't realize that they're that they're actually um, in 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 a place that. 
it, it's just not not the right place. Yeah. Where was I getting at? That you're not, you're never going to be perfect. Like, yes, that's you what have I'm to take the righteousness of Jesus, the perfection of Him. He always works through imperfect vessels. God always and only, only, only works through imperfection. And I said this about the yeah. Bible and all the different versions. And yeah. there's people are going to get it's madder than a horde at, at me. There's no, you can't just do King James version only. I love the King James version because I'd study through it, but but it's not the only version I read yeah. because it's imperfect. Um, the, I, I read the NLT, the Passion Translation. What I'm saying is th this was God's... The Word of God itself is, is perfect, but the people that translated are not. No. What I'm saying is... The, not the, the words on the page. Yes. I'm talking about the Word of God. You got it. Jesus. Yes. The words on the page yes. can be translated, and you're yes. going gonna to think, you're, okay, that, what, what's going on there? Yes. And, and we could say, well, that's the way God wrote it, but that's the way humans wrote it. Right. Humans wrote the version... Yes translated it but here's the thing god is always perfect yeah. through imperfection that's why he did it that way yes. he had and you can see all the different mm -hmm. things in there yeah. like, like man you can see the flaws the human flaws right. in the amazing leaders that 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 um walked with god whether it was moses right or yeah. abraham who got caught a lie or jacob who's a liar i mean all these mm -hmm. amazing leaders right. that were imperfect but then god had a way of working through imperfection yes he always does he yeah. only works through imperfection i think does. that that i'll make that statement I'll right because back it up. i mean since the fall everything is imperfect it's going to be until it, it until is. jesus but comes. but we have to we have to recognize and say, and you know what, okay I, I'm imperfect. Right. <laughs> like, I'm okay with being broken. That doesn't mean we stay as broken as we are. We know that God can mend us throughout right. the way, but we should never. But it's never humility th saying, like, I'm not perfect, only God is. You know, right. then I don't have to trust in my own decisions. I just met with someone today who, um, you know, we just worked through some of that stuff and, like, just super afraid to make the wrong decision. Well, your decisions are never going to be perfect, and the outcome of all of your decisions is never going to be perfect. There's always going to be something that goes wrong, but that doesn't mean that it was wrong or that God is wrong. Like, God is going to work out his purposes even if you make a decision that wasn't perfect or the, um, yeah, just your your heart the, is right yeah, and your motives the, are right. The powerful the statement is when you can admit you're wrong, admit when it, I can right. admit you're wrong. Yeah, and, and it's I, so free. I get it, man. I, I totally understand. We all understand, like, man, we know what nobody wants to be wrong because yes. we feel, again, humiliated. But the right. truth is there's so much power when you can say, you know what, I'm wrong. I'll tell you right now, and I've said this before, mm -hmm. a couple of things. Number one is I'm not the smartest guy in my staff room. I may be the overseer of our church, the lead mm -hmm. pastor, but I, when I'm, when I'm in, a, in a, a room with, you know, nine, ten people, all right, I'm the smartest guy, I have to rely on all parts of that. Of and I feel good about that. Now, I could say, you know what, I know everything. That would be horrible. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't be true anyways. It, it would be thinking that I have all the answer. And yeah. here's the thing is I don't have all the answers. It's right. okay if someone comes to me and says, Pastor Dan, what it, this has happened to me uh, not too long ago where, where they, they were saying they were, uh, there was a conversation about something, and I may have even talked about it, a conversation about something, and uh, people were giving their answers. When it came to me, just because I'm a pastor, um, they automatically thought that I should have the answer, and I just said, I don't have that answer. Right. And they went, oh, okay, you're, mm -hmm. you're right. You're right. You don't need to have all the answers. I don't. Um, but I tell you what I'll do is now I'll go study it more. I'll find out what well, you know, uh, there's a lot of opinions and things going around, but it's it's okay if I don't have the answer, but it gives me a chance to grow and learn. Right. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Laura, you're exactly right. It is just the tricky the way that he. We don't realize it until the Holy Spirit shows it to us, and that's why this last part of Psalm 24 is so important because we ourselves have to say open up ancient gates, like open up my heart to um, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I want you to show me the darkness. I want you to show me what's in my the basement of my heart. I don't want anything there that's that's holding me back from closeness with you. Right. I don't want um, something that's that's um, going to be mud in the waters of my life or, or muddying up the waters of what I teach out of my heart, that kind of thing. So we're saying open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors and let the King of glory enter. And here's the, the reason we're letting the King of glory in to show us what those things are like um, when we do trust in our own problem solving skills, Laura, like you're saying it, like we might not, right? but we have 
people's spirit to come in. He shows yes. us. He shows us, oh, that's idolatry. They're like, you're trusting in yourself right now. You're trusting in your spouse right now to make all those, um, you know, the right decisions or the perfect decisions or the, you know, to be the provider just, or the savior no, or whatever. Yeah, so, it's not gonna happen. so when we um, hear, when the Holy Spirit reveals that, this is the purpose for it. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Now, I heard a couple of months ago for 2019, a battle is coming. I heard the Lord say it, but this is a good thing. Like, I heard it in such a like exciting, powerful way. I saw Jesus on a white horse leading all of us leaders in the body of Christ. And we were on horses like the armies of heaven storming the gates of hell in order to bring out those who have been held captive and by the enemy. So this is it. The Lord also told me at that same time, around that same time, he's invincible in battle, you guys. He has never lost a battle. And so I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel worried about it at all. It was a battle that we are starting. Like we are picking a fight with the enemy and we're going to win because the Lord's invincible in battle. So this is the reason for saying, open up ancient gates, like Holy Spirit, come in because you're going to set me free. And then I'm storming the gates of hell and I'm going to set a bunch of people free. And I don't care what the enemy says about it, but Jesus is going to win because he's already defeated the enemy. So open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, let the King of glory enter, like let allow and choose to let him come in. The Lord of heaven's armies, he is the king of glory. People Amen. tend to like, that's good. People tend to like the idea of Christianity, but yeah. not the idea of intimacy. That's what we've been talking for about mm. six or seven months. And what she, what Emily's talked, she, what she's she. talking about, what that woman right there is that talking about woman. is yes. open up her quarter wake. It's yes. gotta be all the way. Remember, the, the, when, the, when the gate is open all the way, yes. it, is an, it is a sign that the king yes. can come in. Mm -hmm. All and, the way. Right. And uh, that come is... Come on through, Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> come on. Well, it is. And you know what? I, it, I'll just say this. The only person that you and I need to really look at is our, ourselves. That's it. Um, that's it. Yeah. You know, I mean, when, when the Holy Spirit can have my own heart, mm -hmm. there's plenty of work there, by the way. Yeah. There's plenty of stuff here, right here. Right. For, for There's a, quite a playground mm -hmm. here that the Holy Spirit can move, move around in. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, th I think it's so important for us. And by the way, this is something we preach all the time. Yeah. It. When we're around people, we just met with this precious person on Sunday who needed God to get in that heart, yeah. and God did it. And by the, I, by the time that meeting was over, this person looked 10 years oh, yeah. younger, mm -hmm. 10 years younger like that. Why? Because they were able to allow God to get inside their heart and pull so out good. pull it is it, mm -hmm. it, it it'll always be so but that's what the battle is it's going in and pulling out the captives <laughs> from the enemy's camp it's true i love true. it yes it's so powerful look at those hearts man i'm gonna eat them yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks kelly for i'm the love. hungry thanks you guys for the love yeah um, appreciate that so yeah like and share this video you guys um we're gonna pray for you real quick um but yeah please do um Tell us what you think about that, you know? Uh, I tree in the heart, lies being like, just being honest. Like don't, don't be, um, don't pretend to have it all together or don't pretend that you don't have any issues or don't, um, you know, don't lie to yourself, I guess, that, that um, things are fine when actually there's a lot of rocks and stones that need to be cleared away. So this is all because like I told me years ago, Dan and I, our ministry is to prepare the way of the Lord. Like, so the way of the Lord, it's a road, it's a pathway. And every one of us have a pathway in our hearts that are coming closer to the Lord and Jesus come, we're coming closer to his coming back. And so we're, we're just clearing away the road in our hearts and helping you guys clear away the road in your hearts so that we can come closer to Jesus yeah. and 
he's welcome yeah. to come. He's welcome. Yeah, it's what's happening everywhere. It's happening right in our church. God uh, approaching Clearing even all of us and people. If you let him just kind of clear the things that are that are hindering yeah. you in your heart, you will find freedom. You'll find joy. You'll yeah. find um, you'll just find you'll 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 be pure and clean mm -hmm. again. Yes. And um, yes, it's good stuff. Yeah, so good. All right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so. Lord, thank you for this time. <laughs> Precious people listening, Lord God, you love them. And we pray, God, that you'd bless them. Mm -hmm. We pray, Jesus, that um, as, as they're listening, God, that you would uh, speak uh, not, not just tenderly to their hearts, mm -hmm. which is awesome, but you would just um, pull out anything, God, that um, shame or pride or, or fear, anything, God, that might be hindering them. We just pray blessings over them, God, mm -hmm. and uh, we love them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's a great day. Yeah, so good. Love you guys. I forgot. It's been so long since I've done this, I forgot how to end it.